morning, everyone, and welcome to the 158th annual business meeting of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. This meeting is called to order. I'm Heather Gallegos with Dow, and I'm the 2020-21 Chairwoman of the Chamber Board of Directors. I'd like to begin by asking all of you to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for joining me. And now, please welcome Kathy Brock from Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and Blue Care Network of Michigan, our premier event sponsor. Good morning, everyone, and hello. Welcome to this Chamber's annual business meeting. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan is very happy to be the premier event sponsor for today's event. We have a long history of support for the Saginaw County Chamber and are very proud to be your exclusive health benefit provider. We appreciate being part of an organization that looks after the health of area businesses in the same way that we look after the health of individuals here in the state of Michigan. I want to give a special nod to the chamber volunteers who will be honored here today. Volunteers are one of the main reasons this organization is successful and able to drive growth in this community. They have stepped up to share their time, their expertise, their leadership, and their enthusiasm because they want to make a difference and they do. Their dedication to this organization and to each other helps, helps distinguish this community. And believe me when I say that Saginaw County is an extraordinary community. Thank you for being extraordinary people, for dedicating your service to this organization, and for setting an example for future leaders to follow. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you, Blue Cross Blue Shield and Blue Care Network of Michigan. This year presented some unique challenges when it came to planning our annual meeting. One of the main things we like to do is introduce and acknowledge our volunteer leaders and recognize some of them with awards. But doing that through Zoom, it just doesn't give you the same feeling you'd get watching someone stand up, come to the podium and receive your applause. So what we decided to do is acknowledge these amazing leaders and show you a picture of them receiving their actual awards. If you are moved to applaud, hoot, whistle, and otherwise celebrate them, please feel free to do so wherever you are. We'll all pretend to hear you and join in with a little virtual applause of our own. First, I would also like to acknowledge and introduce our 2021 Chamber Leadership Team from the Board of Directors. Our executive committee is made up of 10 members from the full board of directors. In addition to me in the position of board chair, we have immediate past chair, Craig Scudder with Masood Labor Law Group, vice chair, Beth Timi with Amigo Mobility International, secretary, Kelly Petros with Consumers Energy, treasurer, Suzanne Lozano, with Yo and Yo CPAs and business consultants. Corporate counsel, Tom Basil with Shinners and Cook. John Boothroyd with Michigan Sugar Company. Jennifer Carroll with Delta College Corporate Services. Gavin Getz with AT&T. And Andy Mel with Raymond. Completing our 2021 Board of Directors, is Brooke Beebe with Hemlock Semiconductor Operations. Brooke recently replaced Mark Bassett on our board. We say a fond goodbye to Mark, but welcome Brooke with open arms. Bernie Berrigan with Next Year Automotive. Jeff Bertolite with Morley Companies. Beth Charlton with Covenant Healthcare. Michael Kobe with Isabella Bank. Joanne Crary with Saginaw Future. Pat Hengensbach 
with Garber Management Group. John Kaczynski with Saginaw Valley State University. Pavel Konechny with TriStar Trust. Sharon Lehman Case with Ascension St. Mary's Hospital. Kevin Manor with the Manor Group. Jeff Opperman with Opperman's Cork and Ale. Seth Perigo with Huntington Bank. Pastor Chris Pryor with Victorious Believers Ministries. Clarence Rivette with the Wirt Rivette Group. Annette Rummel with the Great Lakes Bay Region Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mary Storm with CMU Medical Education Partners. Dana Tell with Team One Credit Union. And last but never least, Amy Zendergrassi with Bavarian Inn Restaurant. I know you join me in thanking these volunteers for providing their time and leadership to make our chamber successful. It is an honor to serve with each of them. Thank you all. This morning, we also want to shine the spotlight on some of the people who help make the chamber a strong organization. People who extend the reach of our organization and provide both leadership assistance as well as volunteer hours. I'm talking about our chamber ambassadors, chamber diplomats, and the Young Professionals Network Steering Committee. To begin with, I'd like to draw your attention to the screen where we've listed all of our chamber ambassadors and their sponsoring organizations. The ambassadors are the member retention arm of the chamber. This is a group of dedicated volunteers who have the important job of making new members feel welcome. They're hosts at chamber events and they relay information between the, staff, the chamber staff members and our membership. They offer support to area businesses at ribbon cuttings and grand openings. They provide business referrals. They keep the chat going during virtual events and they conduct member surveys that help our chamber plan initiatives, programming and benefits. After their term ends, they become ambassador alumni and they're often tapped to serve on special task force and ad hoc committees where they continue to be chamber representatives within the community. We want to recognize their efforts and thank them all for their service. Thank you. Each year, we recognize one of our ambassadors for outstanding service and member support with the Memorial Ed Dorncipher Ambassador of the Year Award. In addition to meeting criteria of attendance and participation at chamber events, personal contact with member businesses, and committee participation, the ambassador who receives this award also embodies the characteristics exemplified by the award's namesake, Ed Dorncipher. These attributes include integrity, keen networking skills, a dedication to building relationships, honesty, the drive to go above and beyond the expected, being a positive mentor, and continual support and or involvement in the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. As part of the ambassador program, ambassadors receive points for meeting set goals and are required to meet a minimum of 300 points to main, maintain eligibility on the team. This year's recipient exceeded all expectations in her role as ambassador, not only once, but twice in her six years of service. She continually goes above and beyond recruiting new members to the chamber and actively engages members at events and programs. Her leadership is an inspiration to the team and has had a significant impact on membership growth and retention. On behalf of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce, we are proud to present the Ed Dornsifer Ambassador of the Year Award to Don Boucher from the Manor Group. Congratulations, Don. This is so well deserved. On the screen, you can see a listing of our diplomat teams. 
and their organizations. The Chamber Challenge Resource Campaign is one of the Chamber's main sources of revenue. It's built around teams of dip diplomats from our member companies who are responsible for raising a minimum of $16,000 per year through relational sales of sponsorships and advertising. The diplomats play a vital role in helping the Chamber deliver innovative and informative programming, and their efforts currently provide 32% of the Chamber's annual operating budget. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge some of the individual and team efforts from the 2020 campaign. Our Diplomat of the Year Award goes to the top selling individual from our most recent resource campaign. This recipient has been a member of the Diplomat team since 2016. She is a polished sales professional and passionate advocate for the Chamber. And this is her third time receiving this top recognition. It is with heartfelt appreciation on behalf of the entire Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber Board of Directors that we present the Diplomat of the Year Award to Jill Naprude with 20, our Century 21 Signature Realty. Congratulations, Jill. Diplomat campaign teams range in size from one to four diplomats each. The Chairman's Award is presented to the team with the highest average sales per team member. This year's Chairman Award goes to a one-woman team. Our congratulations and thanks go to a real Wonder Woman, Wendy Grohl with Dar Dale Carnegie Training. Congratulations. Our final diplomat presentation is the Chamber Challenge Award. This award is presented to the top selling diplomat team of the year. Continuing a tradition of excellence, dedication to teamwork, and support for the resource campaign that spans 19 years, we want to thank and recognize Covenant Healthcare, this year's top selling team and recipient of the Chamber Challenge Award. This energetic team includes Dennis Osler, Leslie Billadu, Ryan Ratinsky, and John Homan. Together, they achieve sponsorship and advertising sales over $78,000, totaling over more over $1.6 million in their 19 year history. That is outstanding. Thank you Covenant Healthcare for your unwavering commitment and support for the members of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. And finally, we'd like to acknowledge the work and dedication of the Young Professionals Network Steering Committee. You'll see them listed on your screen along with their sponsoring organizations. Steering committee involvement is recognized and rewarded by a point system based on meeting and in event attendance and contact with members of the YPN. At the end of the year, the YPN Steering Committee member with the most points is honored with the Young Professional of the Year Award. This award recipient for the first time ever goes to an individual who has been a YPN Steering Committee member since 2017 and is also the current vice chair of the YPN. She is passionate about the program and is a strong example of an aspiring young professional in our community. On behalf of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce, the Board of Directors, 
and the entire YPN network. We are pleased to prevent, or present excuse me, the Young Professional of the Year Award to Julie Tractor of Valley United Insurance Agency and Cumulus Media. Congratulations, Julie. And our final award presentation recognizes a young professional who has shown commitment and dedication and dedicated service to the YPN, the chamber and the membership. It is selected by the chamber president and staff for the following attributes, a strong commitment to integ integrity, keen networking skills, a dedication to building relationships, honesty, a continual effort to go above and beyond what is generally expected, both personally and professionally, acting as a positive mentor, and continual support of and or involvement in the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. The recipient of the Rising Young Professional Award has been an integral part of the YPN and its success. Serving on the steering committee since 2017, including a term as secretary, she humbly embodies the mission and vision of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Saginaw County Young Professionals Network. Our congratulations and sincere thanks goes to Rising Young Professional Award recipient, Kayla Petz of Saginaw Township Community Schools. Congratulations to all of our award recipients. It is such an honor and thank you for all that you do for the chamber. I am now happy to turn the microphone over to your chamber president and mine, Veronica Horn. Thank you, Heather. And congratulations to all of our volunteer uh, award recipients. Um, I wanna welcome you all to the 158th Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce annual meeting. 158 years, why? That's almost as old as Dick Garber. Um, this past year <laughs> has brought us unprecedented changes in the way we all do business. And the chamber was no exception. When the state of Michigan issued the first, the first emergency order back in mid-March, our staff quickly set up offices in our homes. We immediately sought to keep our mission statement to be the leading voice of influence for our members by using our three core competencies to communicate, connect, and influence. In our communication competency, we knew that getting quick, correct, and understandable information out to you was critical. So I just, I wanna briefly go over some of the things that we did over the past year to try and keep our services to you exceptional. We gathered things like unemployment information, um, who could and could not open, and if they could and could not open, under what circumstances. And then we quickly set up virtual meetings and events as opposed to the in-person. Um, that was a lot of legwork. It was a lot of getting um, information from the federal, state, local governments, the health departments, and analyzing those and putting them together in concise communication pieces for you. We really upped our game in the... Uh, in the communication aspect, social media, you got a lot more emails, you got a lot more standalone emails that were critical um, in getting information to you, including things like working with Saginaw Future, uh, one of our great organizations in this community. We work hand in hand with them. They undertook, they were the pass through organization for uh, millions of dollars in grants for small business and, and PPP loans. Um, they gathered all of the, uh, the applications and we assisted them in reviewing those applications and tried to get those grants out. And I can tell you that Saginaw, this, this Saginaw region got them turned around and out to the businesses that needed them more quickly than anybody else in the state. 
So they are a top-notch organization. We're proud to partner with them. Um, we actually undertook a, a collection, and this was a regional effort um, to collect P, uh, PPE equipment, so that personal masks and um, sanitizers and everything that we needed to um, for our first responders to continue working. So what we found were some of the offices and businesses that were closed, doctor's office, dentist's office initially, had masks and things that they couldn't use at the time. So we undertook a project by collecting all of that and putting it in a central location, which was located at Saginaw Valley State University, who quickly responded to the pandemic as well. We gathered it all up and then triaged it and, and got that back out. So companies or businesses like Mobile Medical Response, the hospitals, and some of those first responders got that equipment that they needed to safely work with the public. Again, we went to virtual meetings and events. Um, under our Connect, we knew it was even more critical than ever that we connect with you and you had the ability to connect with one another. So we continued to present our percolator breakfast, bringing um, speakers that were relevant to the top, you know, to the times and what, you know, for, for COVID and, and uh, other issues. Um, we continued to offer our small business seminars and including um, a minority business opportunities. So one of our small business seminars was, was dedicated to minority business. We brought in bankers and, um, you know, information, a small business technology development center so that anybody interested or in a small business in the minority community could understand how to put a business plan together. We've had a very concentrated effort understanding that while all businesses were hit, the minority community was particularly affected. Um, we started promoting our chamber members through the Living Local program and promoting takeout for our, our member restaurants. We knew that while they couldn't be open, they still need that revenue to at least meet their electric bills and, and pay continue to pay employees. So we really had a concentrated social media effort and email effort to promote those facilities. We had, again, our living local. We put a lot of effort into promoting our chamber members. And then we did a gift card giveaway because of the generous contributions of companies like Consumers Energy and Dow and DTE and Next here, who contributed funds. We being a pass through, we purchased local gift cards and, and did a contest online for our chamber member businesses and awarded those back out to chamber businesses. So we wanted to make it worthwhile and show you the benefit of being a chamber member. Under influence, we continue our, our work and our fight to advocate opening all businesses safely. Um, we continue that fight right now with restaurants being able to open at a 25% capacity. I can tell you, my husband and I were small business owners of a restaurant tavern and you had to have 50% capacity to break even. So right now our businesses are still bleeding less, but still bleeding. And so we believe that they have met the requirements that the administration placed on putting up PPP um, equipment. These are, are these restaurants, but thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment to serve you safely only to be shut down again. So we continue to fight that. We, we continued on the front lines with unemployment reform, knowing that we needed the money to go to the people that actually deserved it. And so we were in front of the, the unemployment fraud that continues today. We're supporting line five. We, we believe that right now, now we are trucking propane. Um, you've seen the price of, of energy go up dramatically and line five can deliver that safely and much more environmentally sound than trucking propane across the state. But I have to say, none of this could have happened without the volunteers that we honor today. All of them from the YPM to the ambassadors, to the diplomats and to our board of directors and executive committee led by Heather Gallegos. They have been there for us supporting our efforts to keep the chamber membership strong, healthy and connected. An organization is only as strong as its leadership. 
and we're recognized statewide for our ability as a mid-sized chamber to have a profound effect on legislation with the programs we offer and for all of our above industry standard 98% uh, percent retention rate. Nationally, a retention rate is about 85% and we're at 98% retention rate. That's significant and we have all of you to thank. This is a strong community. Saginaw has weathered a lot of things in her history. This is no different. We remain strong, we remain together. But the core of it are our staff. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the chamber staff who have worked tirelessly during this past year to provide you, our members, with exceptional programs, communications, and virtual events. So first of all, I would like to point out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess you up, Nancy. I wanna start with Lisa Dobbins. She's our Leadership Saginaw Program Director and Events Manager. And Lisa, I, I can't begin to tell you some of the things that Lisa does around here. She is amazing, uh, just an amazing, amazing staffer. Nancy Stevenson, Director of Communications and Events. Nancy, again, these folks are working 24 seven and I'm not kidding. To, to help provide the, the, the work that they did in the area of technology was just beyond, it was, it was wonderful. Um, Steve Hensley, the newest member of our staff who was actually hired, we, we hired him in March and then brought him on in June. So Steve has never been to a staff meeting in person, but he has taken the lead with our Young Professionals Network and he's done amazing job over this last year. We are really looking forward to his leadership and some of the great things that the YPN not only has already been doing, but, but have plans to do for the future. This is such a critical program to us because that is developing our next base of leaders for Saginaw, as well as Leadership Saginaw under Lisa's purview. We have Sam Taney. He's our membership engagement specialist and you will hear a lot more from him. He's our social media guru. He's always coming up with some just awesome things on, on Facebook. So if you haven't followed our Facebook page, please do that. Patty Sapak, these are all newer members of the chamber. Patty has been just a tremendous assistant. Uh, she is my executive assistant, but does way more. I mean, she is she does a lot of the behind the scenes data work, helping Lisa and Susan and everybody on staff. Finally, I want to uh, introduce you, if you have not met her, where have you been, but to Susan Moody, who is our Senior Director of Sponsorships and Memberships. And with Susan, uh, she holds her own reputation in this community, but I'm here to tell you today, if you haven't heard, Susan is leaving us. So this will be her last annual meeting with the Saginaw County Chamber. The good news is we're still gonna see Susan around. She has accepted a position as sales director for the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, a huge career step for her. We're so mad at her, <laughs> but we're so proud of her. And we just, we look for great things to come in her future. So thank you, Susan, for your 10 years of dedication to the chamber. We are going to miss you sorely, but best wishes to you. I know our membership will miss seeing you around. This is our team and we work for you. Today, we wanna to take the time to acknowledge and thank each of you for helping the chamber and our staff to continue to be exceptional. I wanna personally thank you all and thank your companies for your membership and allowing your team members to volunteer their time and talent to the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. I wanna tell you something. We are the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. We have members throughout Saginaw County. We know and love our, our communities. We love Frankenmuth. We love Chesney. We love Freeland. We love Saginaw Township, Thomas Township, Carleton, Zilwaukee, Birch Run. We know that together we have got a rich history. We are stronger together. The city of Saginaw is where we are located, but our hearts go throughout Saginaw County. And so we support efforts community-wide. We work with the other chambers in this community, in this county, and we look forward to continuing that relationship. So finally, I wanna tell you, in addition to the event program you received with your annual meeting email today, you should have received the chamber's annual report as well. 
We hope you'll take some time to look over at this report and be proud of the work we've accomplished together as an organization dedicated to building a healthy business community. And now before we hear from our featured presenter, I wanna take just a few moments to thank some important members, our sponsors. We are especially grateful for their support this year as we all try to find new ways to stay connected and protect our business community. These sponsors have made today's program possible and helped the chamber continue our work on your behalf. Our premier event sponsor is Blue Cross Blue Shield and Blue Care Network of Michigan. The keynote speaker is Isabella Bank. Garber Management Group is our printed program sponsor. GM Powertrain Saginaw Metal Casting Operation is the Ed Dorn Cipher Ambassador of the Year sponsor. And our gold level sponsors include First State Bank, AKT Peerless Environmental Services, Alpha Media Saginaw, Amigo Mobility International Incorporated, Andrew Super Pavlik PLC, Beer Line Companies Incorporated, Caravan Facilities Management LLC, Consumers Energy, Covenant Healthcare, Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works, Health Alliance Plan, Health Source Saginaw, Hemlock Semiconductor Operations LLC, ITC Holdings Corporation, McDonald Auto Group, Mobile Medical Response Incorporated, Morley Companies Incorporated, Next Tier Automotive, Pumford Construction Incorporated, Saginaw Bay Underwriters, Saginaw Future Incorporated, Saginaw Valley State University, Shaheen Development, Spicer Group Incorporated, TCF Bank, The State Bank, TriStar Trust, Wildfire Credit Union, and Yo and Yo CPAs and Business Consultants. Additional sponsors include our small business sponsors, Deisler Funeral Home, the Children's Grief Center of the Great Lakes Bay Region, and Great Lakes Safety Training Center, as well as our Chamber Partner Sponsors, Great Lakes Bay Regional Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Schaefer and Beer Line Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Fiat. Forgot that, you guys sell so many different cars. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Anita McKeith Photography for masking up and coming to the Chamber to prov provide the photos of today's award recipients. See that list? That is our community. It is from all throughout Saginaw County, strong supporters of our organization and keeping business healthy. Thank you to all of today's generous sponsors. We do have a number of elected and appointed officials and special guests with us on our Zoom. And so the chamber would like to welcome Senator Gary Peters, Congressman John Mullinar, Michigan Senator Ken Horn, Saginaw County District Court Judge David Hoffman, Saginaw County Commissioner Jack Taney, Saginaw County Controller Robert Bellman, Saginaw Mayor Brenda Moore, Frankenmuth City Councilwoman Vicki Schmitzer. Thanks to all of you for your community service and for joining us today. And now I'd like to introduce today's keynote speaker to introduce our featured presenter. Please welcome my good friend and Leadership Saginaw alumni partner, Michael Colby, East Region President for Isabella Bank. Mike? Thanks, Veronica. Good morning, everyone. Beth Timi is the President and CEO of Amigo Mobility International, a leading manufacturer of motorized shopping carts, material handling carts, and personal mobility vehicles. In 1975, she joined her husband, Al Timi, in the company. Al is the founder and inventor of the Amigo Cart, and since that time, Beth has had a role in nearly every department, from purchasing to human resources to sales. She was especially successful in sales, serving a pivotal role in Amigo's history by growing the retail sales division to market share leader with the top five largest retailers purchasing Amigo Carts for their stores. In 2009, Beth received the Top Woman in Grocery Award. Beth also serves on the advisory board for the Saginaw Valley State University College of Business and Management and is the board vice chair of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce, 
which Amigo has been a member of since 1970. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Beth Timmy. So first of all, I want to congratulate all the winners today, and I want to thank you for your efforts. Our community really celebrates you and appreciates all the time you give to this area. You know, our region is filled with great stories that recount the achievements of entrepreneurs who were willing to risk it all, and I mean all. Their never give up attitude is why these businesses exist today. Amigo, Sorry. Amigo was started in 1968 by my husband, Al Timi. But before we talk about Amigo, I want to share a little bit about him. He has a passion for learning and reads constantly, but he didn't always love school. He went to the kindergarten and the teacher told him that he had to unroll the rug, lay down and take a nap. He went home that afternoon and told his mom, I'm not going to school to take a nap, and I quit. And bless her heart, she let him do that. By age 16, early in the 10th grade, he quit school again. He would much, much rather go to work than, than go to school. But I can promise you one thing, he has never stopped learning. He learned the plumbing trade. He became a master plumber at age 23 and started a company called Timmy Plumbing and Heating. And if you drive around a car with him, he will tell you all the houses he plumbed. He did very well with that business. And after six children had arrived, his first wife, Marie, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She struggled with fatigue and walking, and he promised to build her something that would be fun, she could be independent, it would be attractive to use, and Amigo was launched. He turned his two-car garage by the house into an assembly plant, and Rosabelle Dahl from St. Louis, Michigan was the very first person to buy an Amigo that year. By year's end, a total of 10 Amigos had been sold. Sales were starting to take off. But sales became intermittent and so was cash. And one of the things I loved about Al was that he kept a daily journal from the time he started Amigo to the present. And it is a treasure trove of memories. In 1971, he said, if only we had some money, this sure would be fun. By July of 1974, we had sold the 1,000th Amigo and sales were really climbing. It was a very happy time in the business. And it was also a time to build an assembly plant. So in 1976, we built an assembly plant behind our offices across on the Dixie Highway. Things were starting to take off. Over the next two years, two big things happened. In 1977, through an act of Congress, we got the Social Security Administration to accept the Amigo as a wheelchair. This opened the door for Medicare to start assisting people with the purchase of their Amigo. It was in 1981, Al was named Michigan Small Businessman of the Year, and then he was given the National Small Businessman of the Year. So he was invited to the White House and to the Rose Garden, and he was to receive the award from President Reagan that day. That was the day the Pope was shot and all world leaders were pulled off public appearances. And so Vice President George Bush stepped in to give him that recognition. Also in that year, we started, we opened a facility in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Our dream was to have three plants across the United States to serve one third of the country so that we could be close to the customer and be very responsive to them. Over the next five years, we grew to 60 employees at that Albuquerque plant. However, financial struggles hit. 25 companies were building three-wheeled mobility vehicles and competition was fierce. 
we decided we needed to consolidate both of our plants. Where would we do that? Would we choose New Mexico or Michigan? We loved New Mexico, had made great friends there, had a great team of associates, but Michigan really is the hub for manufacturing. They have a great work ethic of people and very good access to suppliers. And so in 1986, we closed Albuquerque and headed back to Bridgeport with our 13 month old daughter in tow. Financial um, challenges continued to grow and the bank suggested that we find a new bank and moved us to a workout group. Uh, the two guys in the workout group came to see us over many visits and they said, we can't pull the plug. You're honest, you're hardworking, we love your story. And we got the reputation for being the longest customer in the workout group. Not something you want to achieve though. We needed some money. We went to some of our Amigo owners and asked if they could help us out. And one of those Amigo owners, Frank Martin, who's pictured here, loaned us several hundred thousand dollars. And it was just what we needed to move forward. It gave us time to find a bank. Our controller, Mike Gaylor and I, pitched to 11 banks and got 11 no's. And our presentation was pretty good. It was the 12th banker who came to us and said, she called from Detroit and said, I'm going up to my cottage on Friday afternoon. I'll stop in at four o'clock. It didn't sound very promising, but Mike and I were ready. We did, she came in, we introduced ourselves and we started our presentation. She stopped us and said, wait, give me that material. I can look at that over the weekend. What I want to know is why are you in this business? What makes you want to succeed? And we told her, and that 12th banker was, yes, <laughs> we were very excited about that. When you think of Amigo, you think of selling to consumers and that that's the majority of our work. And that is the first Amigo that we sold in 1968. Here's what our products look today. Our healthcare line expanded, but market challenges were tough. A competitor was promoting free product, utilizing a government loophole. It was really hard to sell against free. We needed to grow our sales. So we sold the first motorized shopping cart back in 1970, but really hadn't focused on it. We decided to put all of our energy starting in 2004 on grocery stores. And I will tell you today, we have about 80% market share. We work with almost all the national retailers. When sales are going up is when you need to change. And so five years ago, as our sales were climbing in the grocery market, we decided to introduce an industrial line of products. And we've sold to FedEx, Thule, L'Oreal, and our largest customer today is the pet food supplier, online supplier, Chewy. In any business, you have to find your inspiration. What fires you up? What makes you want to never give up? And for us, first of all, it's our customers, those healthcare customers that we are able to help with their mobility, make them independent, live a full life. Some of our famous customers are Richard Pryor, Billy Unser, Colonel Sanders, Ray Kroc, Tody Fields, Terry Garr, and Itzhak Perlman. Our other why, why in the business is our Amigo Associates, our team of people who work so hard at this company to build, ship, sell, service the best product in the industry. You know, back in 1968, we sold 10 Amigos the entire year. Now we're building 10 Amigos an hour. So I wanted to close by saying, what are the lessons learned from, that we learned over the years First, be nice to bankers. You never know when you will need them. And it's good to have that relationship. Change before you have to. You know, I mentioned that sales are climbing. You think they're just gonna keep going up. 
but it's at that point when you're really starting to grow that you need to find the next market or the next product. And that makes businesses stronger over time. Be sure to network. One of the tremendous advantages of living in this region is networking. We're all related and we all use those connections and those ties to help one another. It's a great asset that very few com communities have at this level. And get involved and stay involved. Amigo is proud to say that they've been a member of the chamber, Saginaw County Chamber since 1970. You know, this region is known as the Great Lakes Bay region. And I think the key word here is great. It is a great part of our state of Michigan. I wanna thank you for giving me the opportunity to share the Amigo story. Al and I are hard at work here every day with a great team of associates and we're all so proud to be part of this company and this community. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Beth. I knew that uh, Amigo had a long, deep history in Saginaw County, but to the depth in just Al's memoirs and your memoirs, what an amazing story. And that, I mean, it just gets to what a great company that you and Al have built. And it gets to who we are in Saginaw County. We're tough and we love our community. So many of us could work and live anywhere in the world that we wanted to. We could have our world headquarters anywhere, but we choose Saginaw County. And it is what makes us the greatest part of the Great Lakes Bay region. I wanna thank you so much for your keynote. Um, thank all the volunteers and the award recipients recognized today. We'd also like to thank all of our generous sponsors. And as we get ready to finish our work day and head into the weekend, well, you guys might be, I've got a full day ahead of me. Um, I'd like to leave you with what makes the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce the strong organization that it is today. It's because of you and me and us. We are entrepreneurs and philanthropists. We are executives and artists. We are movers and shakers and doers and neighbors with a shared single purpose to elevate our community through business. I now declare the 158th annual meeting of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce adjourned. Please enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. Thank you. <laughs>